education, Reverend Roy Jones. Uh, he said, kind of do that for us. Thank you. Come here, we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the positive experiences that you've had as a city and as individuals during the past year. And we look forward to the opportunities that lie ahead and pray that we might have wisdom and courage to deal with them in the very best interest of our city. We pray especially for these members of the council. We ask, Lord, that they might work together when they are wrong, be able to have the courage and wisdom to say I'm wrong, and that others listening would be gracious in receiving that word. Because we know that in order to work together, we have to be able to acknowledge both our strengths and weaknesses. <coughs> and pray for all of those who work and make possible our city government. We'd like to pray especially for those in the police, fire department, and others that are first responders in the emergencies that do happen in the course of the year. Bless us now. Use us to your glory and may your will be done for each of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Please join me in the pledge of I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the first meeting of 2020. <coughs> That uh, sounds a little strange saying 2020. It's uh, not only a new year, a new decade. Uh, we have no presentations this evening. We'll go right into communications and reports. Council? Uh, the mayor and I met with uh, Brian Elfring, who owns Smoking Brothers, and he's got an event coming up uh, the end of this month. January 24th and 25th. Uh, the first of its kind, I think, in the whole United States, an indoor barbecue competition. Open to the public uh, on Saturday and I guess that Friday evening. And uh, they'll have food that you can buy and be part of the competition. And really just ask the mayor and I to help get the word out uh, to, to the Residents and let them know about that. And there should be, I think, uh, 30 teams from all, the all over the United States coming to Cape. So, uh, another uh, uh, push for tourism. And so, anything on that next now? Location. Oh, the Show Me Center. And so, uh, it'll be uh, on the floor of the Show Me Center. Uh, and uh, that's the 23rd to 24th. 24 and 25. 24 and 25. Right, sir. Still getting used to this new year. It's, uh, <laughs> it is uh, really unique to have a barbecue contest indoors. And it's, this is the first of its kind. And it's also unique because we're all going to use identical smokers. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Please the Cape City Police Team. Oh, all right. We're going to do a Heroes Cup. We're going to do a Heroes Cup. The Heroes Cup. It's you all, state troopers, and county, right? County and fire. And fire and fire. So obviously, we know who's going to win. Oh, sorry. I forgot how it's here. <laughs> well, it's, it is really unique in that they're all using the same house smoker. They don't have to buy any meat. All the meats are, are buying all the same meat. The only thing that's different will be your seasonings and your sauce that you use. And, and uh, so it's really kind of a unique thing to happen here. So we're kind of excited about that. So the more we can get out, the better. And that's, that's a big thing. Um, when I was on the service center board, they were talking about that. They were talking about they might sell the sell the smokers afterwards at a discounted price. So yeah. So it might be if you're looking for a smoker, it might be a time to get a fellow smoker for a uh, discounted price as well. So um that'll be a fun competition and 
and really uh, all was a good cause. And I hope to build this up to be something uh, unique and uh, maybe have regional competitions and then the finals uh, take place here at Cape Girard. Right. That's what we're smoker, right? We're smoker. That's it. That's it. Good. Anybody else? The rest of you at once. I uh, really have a lot to report. I, I have asked before we've already received a, a monthly project report to update each of us as council person on everything going on in the city during 2020. There's so many things happening with with uh, with streets, with parks and rec, with stormwater, uh, with the city. You know, your capital improvement project started at City Hall with the airport. With, it's just hard to, to keep track of everything. And then, uh, by getting that monthly report, we can get updates on where things stand and, and uh, be more informed when we get questions about it. And, and uh, I just think that's a, a good idea. And we're also contemplating uh, in several of us. Uh, Maybe with our jobs being in Jefferson City at the legislature periodically, uh, we talk about uh, maybe on a monthly basis as a council sending various people up there to talk to our legislators about issues affecting the city and uh, try to have a at least have a face up there and, and get to meet some other legislators besides ours and talk about the issues that are facing us and facing you all the public. So uh, we're going to try to get that done. This coming legislative session, too, so that'd be a big help. Uh, I don't know when would be the right time to ask this question or not, but it's regarding the, the new, I guess, piece of federal legislation that was signed at the end of the year regarding uh, the uh, tobacco sales. But, um, and I guess my question specifically is from a local point of view, um, I haven't read the, the law, but where, where are we at on enforcement and what, what are our plans for that, if any at this point? I know it, it all happened really fast. We uh, were just research and uh, looking at, at our order to see uh, what it would take to put our ordinance in line with the federal um, mandate. So we started some of that uh, uh, this week and uh, we'll bring that to you um, uh, probably next week, Eric. It's something that the back of 21 had brought to us and, right. and we kind of delayed because I knew that if the federal, I really thought that it would be done statewide before the federal government. I can't believe they got it done before they did. And, uh, it makes more sense. That way, it's everywhere, not just in Cape Girard or somewhere else. So, obviously, there's a lot of this even from the federal standpoint, uh, education is going on right now, and, and uh, it seems to make sense. I think the council thinks so to uh, change our ordinance to be in line with that, uh, and also to uh, that helps at the same time to address the baby, you know, the definition of baby and how that might work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else? You want to say anything about meeting today? Lunch? Um,
budget issues. I think the fund balance for the sheriff's office will be depleted this year. And so with that and some jail issues and other uh, issues as well as the competition for deputies and and the now deputies on on the call, I think she said there's two or three is water there that serve the whole county and point out that that they were looking for a way to solve that. And this is one way to possibly do it. But there's still, I understand, still having some discussions about it. So if you have <coughs> concerns or questions, uh, I would say address them if you can. Uh, I will say there were there were uh, two items that were brought up uh, at the time that are of great interest to a lot of people. And uh, number one is that that issue. Uh, Concern about that issue being tax, a new tax, and being on the ballot with RTTF, which is a tax renewal, and perhaps any other issues that may be tax renewal, school districts or whatever. Uh, new taxes tend to bring out a lot of negative voters. And, uh, that was a concern. Uh, they didn't seem too concerned about that. The other issue was just the amount of the tax and the money it's going to raise. Uh, it's uh, you know a county budget's about thirteen million dollars, and this tax absent sales tax will raise almost seven million dollars, which is fifty percent of their fifty percent increase in their budget. And they're currently getting seven and a half million dollars from sales tax, so only seven million dollars. So you know, we as a city or Jackson as a city would love to have a fifty percent increase in our general revenue. We could do wonders with it. We could have programs and do things that. That, uh, but then again, it's just it's an enormous increase, and they have yet to come up. I've yet to see a plan, and yet no one else has seen a plan on how they plan on spending the money. Uh, we, as a city, when we have an issue with just TTF, take an example, we formed a committee last year, again seeking input to look at what we want to do with it and and we still have time to look at those projects and vet those before it goes to election in April. Uh, well, they've got a, a plan for absent sales tax that they want to get and talk about and get done in 60 to 90 days uh, about the process that we as a city go through anytime we have any kind of an increase or, or even a renewal. Uh, so there are some concerns there, and uh, we wanted to make them know they were there, and, and uh, they're in the process of putting together a plan, and we just have to wait to see what that plan is. Anybody else? Well, I, without getting too much into it, I know they're still not formulating the plan, but they, after thinking it, it saddens me that we had to mostly find out about it in the paper. And not and having a, a, a true partnership with them, that saddens me. That especially since it impacts our residents, who I'm just this is an estimation, but you know, 75% of this seven million dollars is, is most likely going to come from the city of Cape Girardeau sales tax. So to find out about something like this in the, in the paper first is it's it's, it's sad. It's sad that we're at that point. Um, the part that I think frustrates me even more is that we're looking at something like this when, you know, the, the article said public safety, and then I look at our public safety, and I think, you know, you know, I I, I, I want to be very delicate in this, but but I just think that. Um, we have our downfall, we have our financial downfalls in public safety as well. And for them to go and, and potentially take our sales tax in the city of Cape Girardeau up to almost eight and a half percent, and for us not to potentially not have any um, a governmental agent, intergovernmental agency where we could potentially get some of that that revenue or that sales tax for our our police officers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
I don't see the sheriff pulling over people and helping us police our crime issues in Cape Girardeau. And so seven and a half million dollars for public safety, I think we need to hear a lot more from the county commissioners on this. And I, hopefully I didn't say that. But it's about as nice as I can be said. Well said. I, I did I did say that uh, that I certainly hope that they would share a plan and would hope that it would be something that the city council could support so that if we are going to be out there at the same time <coughs> talking to voters that we could be supportive of something that um that, you know that, that would be good for citizens of Cape. And that's the thing, after only knowing what the article was, it would be very hard for me personally to support that. We've been consistent as we've talked about issues with them. Well, and this that, goes that back to the 911. Yeah. This goes back to the 911 discussion, and we told them, if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to put words in our mouth, but we said we would not support a new sales tax to fund the 911 operations, correct? We said we said that we would only support it if, if it had assurances that it would be fair in its return to the citizens of Cape. And and correct. And I think one of the if I'm not mistaken, did we uh, one of our proposals on 911 was um had to do with cell phones and landlines and, and yeah. Uh, and I'll say their answer to that concern today was 911 is not part of this. Well, that's another yeah okay so that's well that tax i mean the 911 tax would you know if i remember it correctly and what would allow you to place the burden of the 911 service where it should lie which is on individuals who are calling i mean right now the burden falls on landlines but we all know how many in this room have a landline on still uh, and you know most of these 911 calls are coming from cell phones so that needs to be front and center part of this discussion. Well, that's a state, that's, that's, where, that's a state legislative matter. Well, yeah, but they've given the authority to the to the local governments to, to handle that. I mean, I don't know how you can talk about public safety without talking about nine one one. About nine one one. That has to be part of it. Anything else? Anybody? Okie doke. We will. Uh, Move on. Anybody here this evening uh, would like to appear before the council on an item not on the agenda this evening? Any items not on the agenda? All right, if not, we will have the agenda review. All right, council, we have uh, one public hearing tonight. Um, the regional property at 623 Perry Avenue. Um, <laughs> that's a good work to know. So we'll have a public hearing regarding that. And then we have uh, item number 12, this is going to 20 10, uh, which is the um, changing of the building that property in 623 trailers. That's right. So we settle on it. We have um, the home guarantee agreement um, for all of the place. Um, and then we have the release agreement for the federal FAA at the airport. Um, we have several emergency solutions grant forms um, agreements uh, with um, the uh, community partnership with uh, Catholic Charities, with uh, Salvation Army, and State Hospital Women. So they have uh, all of our partners uh, with the emergency solutions grant. This is a yearly. Uh, process that we go through, and uh, this moves that uh, process forward and is important to our community uh, in that regard. Um, we have a recent link on uh, eight, um, 923 East Rodney for the uh, Bureau uh, affordable, affordable Housing Grant program. Um, we used to have a lien uh, on one of those programs for the lien on the housing bill. It can be uh, bought down and uh, or either that or they're selling the house. Uh, any questions on consent items or items you'd like to remove or carry over? Okay. We have four new ordinances. We have the uh, T 
program or the traffic engineering assistance program from the Ohio Highway Transportation <coughs> Department. Um, this is a traffic study at the Kiwanis Drive uh, intersection that we've talked about uh, uh, several times. And so we were able to get uh, funding from uh, MoDOT to conduct that study. So this, it's a, it was started on that. Um, Number 11 is the record plant for the Auburn Place, uh, Auburn Park Place One. Uh, number 12 is the uh, from the public hearing that I already mentioned. And then number 13 is the execution agreement uh, for us to take uh, federal housing federal prisoners. Uh, during our budget discussions that we had, uh, <coughs> we told you we were going to pursue that. And after a lot of, of uh, hard work and amateur night, uh, Negotiations, uh, we've come to this point of, of doing that and really want to give Adam a lot of credit. He, he uh, did a lot of justification to get, uh, get that done and give us a, a rate that uh, seems to be uh, sustainable for us uh, uh, financially. So, any questions about any of those items? Adam, you think I have on that? No, I don't want to anyone to that question. Well, I have a question. You, I, I didn't see any information. Maybe it was there. I mean, is, there is there an anticipated volume or daily census that we might be so, expecting? Right. We're, we're at a 20 person capacity for our deal. So obviously, we don't want to go over that. We do have overcrowding plans if that were to happen, but we want to keep it under 20. Right now, our daily average in the jail is only four people. So what we're looking for is around 10 or so. We might have some flexibility there if we do have a busy day or night, so to speak. But right now, we're looking at about 10 a day. We can always reduce that number if we get to start to fill up that when we anticipate. That's the plan. Thank you. Right, yeah, no, I mean, I just, 
they've been working on it for a while and no guarantee that they're going to Perhaps you consider it, you know, you assume that. Nobody on behalf of the public hearing, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Are there any individuals here this evening to speak on any item that's on the agenda this evening? You will probably hear a speaker about any item that's listed on our agenda. <coughs> if not, we'll go ahead and consent in there. Number 20-1, an ordinance authorizing the measure of suit performance energy agreement for Evan Justinson for Auburn Park Place 1 in the city of Cape Island Village. Number 20-2, a resolution authorizing the measure of suit lease agreement for the litigation administration of Cape Park Region Airport. Number 20-4, resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with community partnership in Southeast Missouri for 2020 emergency solution grant funds from the Missouri Housing Development Commission in the city of Cape Number 20-5, resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with capital charities in Southern Missouri for 2020 emergency solution grant funds from the Missouri Housing Development Commission in the city of Cape Number 20-6, resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Salvation Army for 2020 emergency solution grant funds from the Missouri Housing Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. 
Bill number 20 11, the Northern Shelf Resident City Manager, excuse me, agreement between the City of Cape Cod, Missouri, the Cape Cod Police Department, and the United States, United States Department of Justice for the purpose of housing federal officials in the City of Cape Cod, Missouri. So Second. Motion to run you something by Nate. Any discussion? Mayor, I just say uh, kudos to uh, Chief and the rest of the staff on this. Uh, this goes back to looking at how um, ways to cut costs and ways to increase the revenues and the financial impact of 255 to 383,000. And we've already got the things in place is is a, a, a great a great tool for us. And thank you to the staff for putting that together. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> Excuse me, we do have one appointment. This is the appointment of the chair of the Census 2020 Complete Count Committee. Uh, Melissa Stickle is uh, uh, in my mind is that chairperson. The community partnership has uh, received a grant to help. If you want to talk about that, you can come forward and be glad to hear. Well, again, good evening. Yes, the community partnership has been awarded a grant to help to be the lead in Cape County on census outreach for the 2020 census. And that's not the only reason that it makes sense for um, me to chair the committee, but our role in the community by bringing uh, a lot of people to the table um, makes sense. So our role uh, is to let other individuals know the importance of getting counted in the census and for Every person and child that does not get counted, but the state of Missouri will lose about $1,300 of federal money coming to the states so that's per person and per child. And a lot of our agencies in this community are supported through federal grants, including our agency. So we want everybody to be counted so that we can um, have access to, to those federal funds, but also for prisons and hospitals and schools. So, that, so our role is really the education piece will not be going out in the communities knocking on doors the census has people for those but we will be talking um, a lot to everybody about the importance of it thank you how many does the grant specify how many people we have to have i know it says the committee how many are on the committee um so the committee can range any size um a couple of people to a whole lot of people so we have um sat down with actually molly and um, the health department and our agency to identify some key people that needs to be on that committee. And we're waiting for this appointment to actually form the committee so that we can now invite people to be part of it and start working on strategies to make sure that our hard to count populations are counted. Well, of course, I actually just want to thank you again for taking this on. Uh, the this census is a huge, huge it's a huge ordeal. That's why we don't do it every 10 years. And uh, I've I've been working with the Census Bureau because they're always in need of hiring more people to do census counting. And so there are really good opportunities for part-time employment that are out there for people that want to go out into the community and help make sure every Cape Girardian gets counted. because uh, that's a really huge thing for those federal dollars. And I believe the, the Census Bureau is paying between fifteen and eighteen dollars per hour. Really well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then they're also reimbursing for mileage, so it's an incredible part-time job. So it's something that everybody should do. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, thank you, folks. Any other questions? I'm going to do a motion. Second. Second by Ryan, second by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, I don't think there's any other business that I'm aware of. Take the motion to adjourn. I will entertain a motion to adjourn the closed session for legal actions and litigation, confidential communication, and legal tests on personnel matters pursuant to the vice section 3610213. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say. I'll say. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.